Hello, this is Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Betson, the Professor of Military Science for the Gateway Battalion at Washington University in St. Louis. Today, I'm going to talk about the discipline of military science. We're going to have this discussion because it's helpful for cadets to understand what this arc of curriculum that they're experiencing over multiple semesters is leading toward and all of the factors that go into it. So for military discipline over the course of this talk, we're going to talk first about the discipline itself. Sometimes it's very easy to understand for some other academic disciplines what are the components and what go into it because they're the things that we've grown up with in our lower level education. Next, we're going to talk about the components of military science. What are those things that we are trying to build over the course of our initial semesters in order to prepare you for what comes uh, later? Now, many of you may be thinking that uh, it does not seem to make sense that we would have this kind of scientific approach to warfare. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We can say a little bit about the nature of warfare and how that is actually going to affect all of these components of military science and the variables that go into them. And finally, we're going to talk about your final project. What is that thing that we are moving toward with all of our education, all of our lessons in our earlier stages of academia in order to prepare you for that final project that you'll present to a committee? And even cadre constantly have when they're thinking over the arc of this curriculum. So again, the military science discipline, sometimes we might say the leadership in science discipline. And whenever we talk about leadership and we talk about leading troopers, um, generally we fall into this idea of that leadership is an art. Uh, and that's really important, but it can start to be confusing. Is this an art or is this a science? Am I being evaluated on my art or on my scientific, my artistic or my scientific approach? Am I being evaluated on leadership or am I being evaluated on my tactics? Uh, so for that, I'm going to put this to the side. So we think about the art aspect. We'll, uh, we'll park that in the corner uh, for right now. And then we'll, we'll revert back to this question of the scientific aspect of this military uh, or this academic discipline. Uh, so again, the cadets may have the question, what exactly are they, what are they working for? What, what, is the, what is the purpose of the multiple lessons that we have uh, in our classroom, in our labs that we face? Um, so we'll go ahead and go with that and we'll, we'll just, we'll establish a Cadet Awesome here. Uh, so we'll say that Cadet Awesome, uh, he's got a very square jaw, he's, here we go, he, he's particularly good, he smiles because he really enjoys being in the Gateway Battalion. Um, we'll say that uh, we'll put him pretty well established in his uniform, all right. So again, it's Cadet Awesome in the U.S. Army, right? And we'll go ahead and make Cadet Awesome uh, a, a Cadet Staff Sergeant because he's, he's an MS3 and he's facing these big questions of, I'm about to go to advanced camp, what am I being evaluated on? So, um, so for Cadet, Cadet Awesome, uh, what's gonna be going into his brain? Uh, and this is the importance of, of this, uh, or really kind of the arc of this lecture, um, is going back to this idea of science. So if we think about science, what, are, what comes to mind when we think about scientific disciplines? Uh, if we think some of the things that may come to mind, it might be things like variables. Variables may come to mind. In addition to that, we might think things like formula. Okay, and then just like any other college student, if they're thinking about taking some courses that are linked together over the course of four to six to eight semesters, um, you're thinking that you're probably working towards some kind of uh, culminating event or some, some kind of thing. So that's where we get to this kind of, this idea of a final project. So in, in scientific disciplines, we think about variables, think about formula and we think about um, final projects and, and, and papers and, and uh, presentations that you'll give at the end of this. Uh, so let's let's take them uh, in 
in, in stride. Uh, this is where we're really talking about the components. What are the components of military science? And so if we're thinking about the components of military science, you might think about those things that, uh, um, things like terrain, You may think about uh, things like the weather. You might think about enemy forces. We'll say friendly forces. And then enemy forces. Now, these are these variables that, that uh, are all components that as we start to get an, a basic understanding in our in our uh, MS 100 level courses, we're trying to get the data that's associated. So what are those, you know, what is the data that we can pull into each of these things? For terrain, we're thinking about that terrain analysis that you might get out of OCOC. Uh, you might understand those, uh, those critical uh, land features or, or, or terrain features, uh, your saddle and your, uh, your draws, et cetera. Uh, for weather, we're thinking about key components of weather. You're thinking about uh, BMNT, or you're thinking about EENT. And then for friendly, the friendly situation is understanding what are the what are those components? What are those uh, what what are what makes up that infantry team or that infantry squad or that infantry platoon? And what does that bring to what, what capabilities do we have from a friendly situation uh, in terms of bringing to the fight? So what are what are our capabilities that we have within our friendly elements? And of course, for the enemy, we're thinking about uh, the composition and disposition of the enemy. So these these are uh, your composition and disposition. Those are all of these, these points, these data points that we've got to collect out of each of these different variables or these components of military science. Um, but we know that uh, it's, it's one thing to understand the data or understand those individual components. But as we advance through our semesters, as we advance through this, uh, this arc of curriculum, we know that it's not enough just to know the data. We've got to do the analysis, right? Um, so for our analysis, we start taking each of these components and we start analyzing them individually and we also analyze each of them uh, together as they relate to each other. For instance, if you know that you're going to take components of your friendly and your enemy situation, you're really looking at this thing called maybe net assessment. That net assessment is something also called relative combat power. But you can also imagine how the other components relate to each other. For instance, if I, if I do an analysis of the terrain that's associated with the mission, and I do an analysis of the enemy forces, I might start to realize where, where the enemy might be wanting to try to attack me, or where, how the enemy's situation is going to influence, and the enemy situation as it relates to the terrain is going to influence the things, uh, the, the mission that I'm about to go after. So all of these, all of these components start to be evaluated and analyzed uh, on their own. So that, that's that kind of key analysis that we get as we advance through our second year. Um, but all of these different components start to be put into our formula. So what are our formula? And these, this, is, this isn't a single formula, AE, meaning it's, it's plural. Um, what are these formula that, are, that, that exist throughout this military science discipline? And this is where you can start to see that things like battle drills or some of those, uh, some of those critical uh, method or, or formula that, that are defined through our doctrine and through our training circulars like the Ranger Handbook, uh, such as how to, conduct, how to conduct a raid or how to conduct an ambush. These are formula that are generally provided and that are going to influence the way uh, that the cadets are going to go after uh, what they're uh, going to go after their mission. Um, so as the each individual component is going to be analyzed or is being considered as individual pieces of data, they're analyzed on their own and then they're analyzed relative to relative to each other. Those are being injected into this formula. The and and a single mission may include multiple formula. 
For instance, if we know that the enemy situation has defined that a certain area um, is going to be a, a more likely uh, area of enemy contact, combine that with a terrain that may be more wide open or uh, you know, is going to face, you know, have, have different challenges on your friendly forces, that may start to influence your, your movement technique or the, uh, or the, the formation that you might have at your lowest and your highest levels. So all of these uh, elements are all being injected into your formula, and all those formula are going into the brain of our Cadet Awesome here. Now the Cadet Awesome, uh, he's got to take all of those factors into account. He's got to do this relatively quickly, uh, and then he is going to start pushing. You know, all of that is going to be tabulated and, and is going to develop into uh, some kind of final project or some kind of uh, some kind of thing. And, and and you see where I'm going with this. But what does what does your final project look like? Uh, and if we think about any kind of uh, arc of discipline, you're thinking that there's like a final paper. Uh, and that final paper, depending on what uh, what your academic discipline might be, is generally organized in a certain way. And this, of course, is your five paragraph your five paragraph operations format. So operations order format. And then, uh, like many final projects, you may have if you've got to present your final project, you're probably going to have some kind of um, some kind of supporting documentation or some some visual representation of what you're actually getting after, so that your audience will fully understand what you're saying. And this, of course, is going to be your terrain board model. Now, again, if, going so if we think that all of this is we're determining what the cadet is actually going to have to present at the end of his uh, experience as a cadet. Uh, is experienced through his uh, curriculum and through these semesters, um, this five paragraph op board and this terrain board model will be tremendously important uh, as, as he's moving forward and something that should be practiced. Uh, but now we want to go back to this, this question about whether or not a scientific approach to warfare uh, is actually correct. So here we can talk a little bit about the nature of warfare um, and its effect on this, this formula or this system uh, that we're developing. Uh, and with this, I'm going to say that uh, your, our, our cadet here is probably going to start remembering a couple of things, right? So he's got a number of things floating around in his mind, and among them is this idea, brings us back to this concept of art. Um, because we know that, uh, it, again, warfare exists in the realm of uncertainty. Uh, so. Cadet Awesome may, you know, he could very quickly go back to his time, perhaps when he was in high school physics. And when he was in high school physics, he remembered that there was a ramp. And that ramp had a box on top of it. And that box is being, having a force acting upon it. That's a constant force, acceleration, 9.8 meters per second per second. And based on some math or some variables that are injected into a formula, you can figure out what the, what, what this angle is and the force that's acting upon it. And that will determine what the force and the, the, the momentum that's actually going to go down that, uh, down that path. But, that awesome, since he did so well in high school, is also going to remember that there was actually another force that was acting against that box. And that counter force uh, was, was mu. Uh, so what, was it, what exactly is this mu? This mu is really what's coming in between here and then after the final project is put together, Cadet Awesome is, is, is thinking about this idea of friction. So if we think about friction as a component into this, that's where we start to understand the art aspect. If a cadet understands that in his platoon, in his or her platoon, he's got uh, 36 soldiers, she will know that there are at least 36 forms of friction uh, inside of this operation. Any, any trooper, uh, depending on all of the things that are going on in their life at that particular moment, is going to influence how well we're going to be executing this formula that we've actually gotten into play. Um, so as we're going through our military science courses, we know we're, we're developing this these understanding of leadership because we know that we need to be able to overcome certain sources of friction as we actually get into our final projects. So here we go. Now we can talk about our final project. As we're going to go through all of our uh, semesters in, inside of our universities and going through some of our field training exercises, these are all times where as uh, MS1s and MS2s, we're getting to 
understand these, compo these variables that are being taught in our class, start to get a sense of analysis and get exposed to these formula. Uh, but in our third year, when we get to our training exercises, we're really starting to get our final runs at practicing uh, this final project. Um, and this final project is going is ultimately uh, going to face the, those MS3s as they attend advanced camp. Uh, so the question here is how do we prepare ourselves, how do we prepare our cadets to get to the point where they can dominate as that platoon leader uh, doing their final project where they're taking all everything they've learned, um, analyzing, injecting it into formulas, knowing what sources of friction they need to overcome, producing a five paragraph operations order supported by a terrain board model and presenting this plan. Well, if that was the end of it, then that would be a little bit easier. But of course, in this situation, we're talking about an arc of uh, an academic discipline that is extending over the course of six semesters at this point. Uh, and just like any other academic discipline that has that many classes wrapped up, it usually does not end at just writing a paper and producing a final project. Uh, in my case, I was a history major when I was in college, and so I wrote my thesis. And when I wrote my thesis, I had to present my thesis to a board. Those bo it was a board of experts. And those board of experts, uh, when I presented my, my findings and my, my thesis, they were able to present back to me other forms of friction or other variables that I did not account for. Um, and then as I was standing in front of those, uh, the members of this board, I had to defend my thesis. This ultimately is what we're trying to get after. It gets to the point that after we create this plan, we have to defend our thesis. We have to defend our plan as a platoon leader at advanced camp. This, of course, is so important because our ability to defend our plan as a platoon leader at advanced camp is going to be the culminating event, the, the, the critical event uh, in our military science curriculum that is going to determine that grade that we get uh, moving into the accessions process. In conclusion, a quick review. First, we discuss the academic discipline which underpins the curriculum of Army ROTC. We discuss the fact that it's, it has art and it has science in it. And then we discussed for that scientific aspect uh, that there are components. Those components in, those, in that aspect include variables and includes formula. Those variables include data that must be analyzed and then injected into these formula, which will ultimately lead to a cadet's final plan. But we also discuss the fact that warfare exists in the realm of uncertainty, chance, fog, and friction. And we know that we cannot ignore the art of leadership as we start to determine how these formula are going to interact in a realm of uncertainty with, with a, the numerable forms of friction that get injected into our plan. And then finally, we talked about that final project. We talked about the operations order and the terrain board model kit, which allows for a cadet to present their final paper. And then we talked about the need to defend that thesis. With that, I hope this helps you understand what goes into our ROTC curriculum. Good luck in advance camp in Gateway to the West.